Today I thought I'd do a little thing about how to read chemical structures. So here are some chemical structures and you might have wondered what they meant. So these are called skeletal structures. There are a few rules for these skeletal structures. Firstly, any corner or any end of a line that isn't labelled is a carbon atom. So for example, on the first structure here, this is glycolic acid, we've actually got two carbon atoms on these two corners, this one and this one. The second rule is that carbons have to have four bonds. The bonds are the little lines on the structures. If the carbon doesn't have four bonds, that means there are hydrogens that need to be put on there to give it four bonds. So if we look at glycolic acid, if we look at the carbon on the right hand side, it has four bonds. So it's got two lines here to the O, which is oxygen. We have two lines here as well, so we have a total of four around that carbon. If we move to the carbon on the left, this does not have four bonds yet. It's got two lines leading to it, which means it needs two more bonds. So it's going to have two more bonds to hydrogen, which is H. Yes, I say H because I am Australian and that is how we say it here. I think it's like 50-50 H and H, but whatever. I say H. So there is glycolic acid. That's how you would convert it from a skeletal structure to a normal structure. So this is called an expanded structural formula. So propylene glycol is the next one here. This is again shown as a skeletal structure, so if we want to convert it to a regular expanded structure, we would put carbons on each of these corners. So we've got these two corners here, and we have the end of a line here, which is also a carbon. Again, we have to go through and check that carbon has four bonds. So this carbon on the left has three at the moment, so we need to add one more as a hydrogen. We have carbon here that has two lines, so it needs two more lines. And then we have carbon over here, which only has one, so it needs three more. And so that's actually what propylene glycol looks like. If we look at salicylic acid, this one, we have a hexagon on the left-hand side. This is called a benzene ring. It's really useful in biology, so you'll see it a lot in lots of different ingredients. So again, same rules, carbons on each of the corners and ends of lines that don't have anything on them, plus enough bonds to give every carbon four bonds. So we have six carbons in the benzene ring, and then we have one more here. Now we can look at them and see which ones need extra bonds. So if we start on the right, we've got four bonds to this carbon, this one has four lines already. We have three on this, so we need one extra hydrogen. We have three on this as well, three on this one, and three on this one. And so that makes all the carbons happy with their four bonds.